Hello, hello, YDBT Daily. Just off of work, uh, decided to do a show. Not sure if I'm going to do one tomorrow or not. I was planning to go to the track with Hush Money, but apparently there's a national back order in belts. I wanted to go with the 3-0 pulley. Right now it has a 3-7-5 pulley. The 3-7-5 pulley has gone nine sixes. So if I can go with the 3-0 pulley, it should be an 8-90-8-80 car in Florida weather. Um, but I don't think it's going to happen because belts, 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 belts. So either I don't go to the track or just take the GT500 because the GT500 is now working properly. It's got proper working transmission, alternator, everything seems to be kosher. So I was thinking about taking that out there messing around, but I'm not married to the idea because I think the closer the end of the year comes, the more you realize that Palm Beach International Raceway is going to close, like legitimately. A lot of people are trying to sign petitions. A lot of people are trying to trying to save the track, but it's just not going to happen, in my opinion. In my opinion, that track is a gonzo, done and over with. It's just a matter of time because if someone gave you $80 million or more for property, Walmart, let's say, you'd sell it in a heartbeat. That's the difference between you living the high life or struggling to keep something open and paying high taxes for it. So track's going to be gone. So I'm, I'm kind of like on the fence whether I should give that track any more money or time or attention. But who knows? We'll see what the deal is. Maybe I'll go a couple more times and just to say I did because it's semi-local until it totally closes down forever. So I want to say hi to the people here before we start talking about tuner, calibrator, and tuner with two O's. What are the differences? And this is just my opinion. Um, I'm not trying to call anyone out specifically. It's just uh, interesting to see. Certain people talk about how great their tune is. And I've seen this lately where people are like, my tune. And I'm like, your tune? Like, your tune? Like, you don't even know how to tune a fucking two valve. Like, forget a, a Gen 3 or Gen 2 car. Forget a Coyote even. So I think people get a little too used to the whole LS model where you just have, like, pre-made tunes and you adjust timing and VE and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden you get yourself a Coyote and you're like, oh, yeah, I can tune this. And I'm like, no, the fuck you can't. Not a certain way. So we'll talk about what I mean by that. But before that, as always, I say hi to the people here. JD Swag, Wesley Stewart uh, in the house, Tony Tony, Clip Clop the Horse, Shark Marls, Dustin Engler, Mike Hunt, Kona GT, Angel Espinal, Cody Hobbs, Blake Bailey, 508 Josh, Angel in Puerto Rico says, what's up folks? Coming at you from Phoenix City, Alabama, aka the armpit of Alabama. Alabama is the armpit of the US. So you're kind of in like armpitception. Um, Julio Ozuna, Gallo Bravo, Mr. Mustang Wings, Dustin's Customs 508 Josh says hit the hit the like slash dislike button. What the fuck's up with that? Boosted G3 Hypersync, Matt 211 GT, Isaiah Davalas, Fresh Pasteles, Alexi, Yonsei, Henry. Now, I was contemplating making the chat members only, meaning anyone can see it, but eventually I'm going to start making the chats members only uh, because just to weed out some of the silliness the guys that are members tend to kind of be with it and i think i'm only going to open up the um public chat on the peasant chat because the paid chat in my opinion monday through friday or tuesday wednesday thursday if i get back on that schedule should be only for members people that are kind of with it have something to say and their comments should stand out and i thought about doing that and i think i'm going to do that going forward but today we'll just keep it as is so tuner t-u-n-e-r Tuner, T-O-O-N-E-R, and Calibrator, what's the difference? Well, Yolo Douchebag, like one of the guys said, was a tuner with two O's, meaning you take an already vetted file, an already done file, and you add a degree, and you change a math curve, you tweak AFR, you change shift points. That, to me, is T-O-O-N-E-R, tuner. So you're just fucking around you know you're just adjusting some parameters and playing around with your own personal vehicle in my opinion a calibration specialist sends a vetted tune and then dials it in like at racetracks really knows the nitty-gritty and can properly diagnose the vehicle a calibration specialist i think can properly diagnose a vehicle for instance there have been situations where i have seen and we have seen in the last couple of weeks where there are certain intake couplers that are collapsing uh, by the throttle body and we look at math frequency we look at uh, pounds a minute but that's not always a good indicator we also look at um not only math frequency pounds a minute we also look at your short terms we look at everything how it's working together so you have to have an in-depth knowledge like an in-depth knowledge <laughs> hey, buddy. we you have to have an in-depth knowledge of how the tune is configured 
meaning you need to know how the tune is configured in order to fine tune the vehicle. And that to me is a calibration specialist, which is basically what I am. Tuner is a guy that just adds a degree or two, thinks he knows what he's doing. Now, calibration specialist to me knows how it's configured and can pretty much dial it in to perform exactly how the customer wants. But again, you have to know how it's configured. There's many different ways of making, uh, you know, there's many different ways of making a tune, okay? A lot of people, without getting too into the details, they'll mess more with torque tables than they need to in order for the throttle to be okay. Other tuners will mess more with throttle area and hack their way around that. And when you really figure out that they kind of all have to do with each other, but you're hacking one and not the other, that tells me you don't really know what you're doing. So to me, that's a tuner, T-U-N-E-R. So tuner, guy who doesn't know, adjust timing, adjust shift points, done. Calibration specialist, someone like myself, in my opinion, who understands how the tune is configured and I understand how to interpolate the data that I'm seeing to be able to properly diagnose your vehicle. And then the tuner, T-U-N-E-R, is a guy that kind of configures the tune but starts hacking areas in order to achieve the desired result but not necessarily know why he's doing that. Let's say, for instance, my car stalls, right? My car stalls all the time. Well, if you're a Holly guy, if you're an AEM guy, if you're a big stuff guy, you'd say, well, normally I would crack the throttle open a little more. Technically, you can get away with that. But on Coyotes, the more throttle angle you have at idle, the less spark you have. So people go, wait a minute, what's causing the stall? Is it a lack of airflow? Or is it a lack of inferred airflow? Or is it a lack of torque commanded at that, R at that RPM and that air load or spark? So a lot of people just go, well, let me race throttle. Well, that didn't work. Let me do this. That didn't work. Let me That's a tuner, T-U-N-E-R. Meaning he has a file. It runs wide open throttle. Watt tuning is still a thing, guys. Watt tuning is still a thing. There are tuners out there that their cars absolutely drive like shit but the cars are fast. So they'll say, well, I'm a good tuner because the car is fast. And <laughs> they don't realize that at wide open throttle, the car is ignoring a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff the car is ignoring when you're at wide open throttle. So a lot of tuners will say, I don't care that cold start sucks. I don't care that it drives like shit because at wide open throttle, it shifts where I want, fueling is where I want it, spark is where I want it, and it runs a bad ass number. A real good indicator of that is to see how a car starts. Again, I talked about Holly stuff. Guys at in the in the staging lanes, Coyote, we're talking Coyote only. If they start their car and they need to constantly rev their car to keep it running, and then the car runs a badass number, you can say he's a tuner, T-U-N-E-R. If a guy has an NA car and he goes to the HP tuners or you know has a, a, a hacked file or, or he draws a file that isn't locked, loads it with HP tuners, adds a degree or two, T-O-O-N-E-R. Calibration specialist understands how the tune is outlined and knows how to properly vet the data that he's seeing, okay? Uh, this is why I hesitate to do things that the customer wants. A lot of people say, well, Alex, why don't you just raise the idle? Understand, I shouldn't have to raise the idle. Now, a tuner, T-U-N-E-R, will probably raise the idle to fix your issue, but I wanna know why is it idling high? Another reason, let's say for instance, T-U-N-E-R's tuners will say, you, uh, okay, the car's lean 20%, here's 20% more fuel. I would say, why is the car 20% lean on vetted data? So a lot of people literally put in their heads that the tune is the issue. My car is lean 20%, can't you just throw more fuel at it? I would say, why is the car lean 20%? Another tuner, T-U-N-E-R, would say, Here's 20% fuel. And the customer will go, see, Alex, it was the tune the whole time. You weren't able to give me the proper attention. And he did. So all of a sudden, I'm going to use him as a tuner, T-U-N-E-R, instead of your calibration skills, because you didn't fix the issue he did. Okay. And then let's say about, I don't know, two months down the road, you service your cold air, right? You're, you're going you're gonna to change the cold air intakes uh, filter. And you take it apart, take the cold air, take the elbow apart, take the cold air apart, take everything apart, and then you reassemble it. 
Now the car is 20% rich and you don't know why. Wait a minute. I have the same cold air. I don't understand this. Hey, Tuner. Remember when it was lean 20% with Alex's tune? But then I went to you and now it is on the money. I serviced my cold air the other day. My filter, I cleaned it, put it back all together. And now it's 20% rich. So you fixed the vacuum leak? That's the difference. That's the difference. Every single customer that goes out there and goes, my truck drives like shit. Dude, that's vetted data. My car drives like shit. Dude, that's vetted data. They just give up. They don't want to look at the car themselves. And they go, fuck it. I'm going to go to another tuner. The tuner goes, uh, let me crack the throttle. Let me do this. Let me adjust it. Let me short shift the shit out of the car to achieve a 7,500 RPM shift. Fuck it. Let me short shift the shit out of the car. It doesn't matter why it's blowing through the shifts. I just want to achieve a desired result. And I go, your clutches are slipping. Why don't you just fix your trans? That's the difference. So hopefully you guys understand where I'm coming from when I say, hey, man, if it's shifting at 7,900 NA, it's not the tune. The tune is vetted. It's your trans lead frame or clutches. And they don't want to hear that shit. They just want to say, can't you just short shift it to achieve 7,500? I mean, technically I can, but that's the wrong way of doing things. Because if I'm commanding 7,500 and the trans shifts at 8,200, what's the issue? The tune or the trans? So thought I'd let you guys know what my thoughts are between tuner, T-U-N-E-R, tuner, T-O-O-N-E-R, and a calibration specialist. Hopefully you understand where I'm coming from because we see these issues every day. Someone says, Tony's putting in work. You guys wanted to see Tony? This is Tony. When I'm talking and he is out here not getting the proper attention, he is just a wild man. So I said, you know what? The people want to see what Tony's all about? I'll show them what Tony's all about. Let's see if he jumps up there. Get up there, buddy. Let's see. You won't fucking dare. No way. He's gotten up there a couple of times. I kind of want him to, to work out his back leg. <laughs> Get up there, buddy. You can do it. Um, yo, Alice, what's going on, brother? Just wanted to say thank you for going back and forth with me so much, helping me troubleshoot the misfire and trans issue. Uh, happy to be able to catch it live. You're welcome, Colt Matanity. Okay, buddy. Here you go. There you go. So, yeah, you're welcome, buddy. Uh, I think you went 670s, NA, 60 to 130. GT500s. Bone stock GT 500s run 720, 60, uh, 2020 GT 500s run 720, 60 to 130. He's doing it NA in the sixes. <laughs> he saw the hats. He's like, I'm out of here. So he was going in the sixes naturally aspirated. Good for him. Let me get him the toy because he'll freak the fuck out. So, um, congrats. I mean, the car's rolling the fuck out and NA. 10R80 car running that kind of number is pretty fucking legit in my, in my opinion. Alex, thank you for getting me dialed in today with my Vortec Eliza's S550. Today, how many revisions did we do? Five? Five? His Vortec car shifting. The last tune I said, okay, so R4 on his tune, right? On Eliza's S550's car was shifting at 7,200, exactly where I was commanding it. Then I sent them a shift and I said, let's see if this tune shifts at 7,500. Shifted exactly at 7,500. The tune commanding the shift point and it happened, that that car is working perfectly. So Eliza's S550, don't be surprised if your car is a 1040 car. If it launches good. Like a 1040, 10, 1050 car. Like I'm pump gas, bitch ass boost on that Vortec. You're going to like it very much. Your stories with Tony have me dying sometimes. Finally going to get to pick up a pup of my own this weekend. Very good. Does Tony get to keep his testicles? I think so because my last um, Boston Terrier had his nuts and he was awesome. He didn't pee all over the place. He didn't poo or anything in the house, but I didn't have him as a pup. I had him as a one-year-old. This guy I've had since braining you, as you saw. Let's get the likes up, guys. So, yeah, we got 227 watchers and 131 likes. You know what to do. You want me to do some of these shows? I got to have at least... Give me 60 or 70% like to watch ratio because that usually uh, tends to go that way. Eliza says, yes, five. So today we sent five revisions back and forth and we never scheduled anything. He didn't tell me I'm going to take the day off. He just said, do it at your leisure. His logs were so clean, so good. We got them done in a day and a half. And the car probably makes 680 horse and he's going to run in the 10. He's going to be happy. Joey G says, Alex, shout out to uh, John Nardi at Lund working with him on my new TVS edition. Very thorough. 
And thanks for Cheryl for shipping the refund on my new Lund apparel. You guys are the best. Thank you very much, Joey G. The the biggest difference, I think, <laughs> the biggest difference, I think, let's say all tuners are the same. All tuners are giving you the same file. All tuners are giving you, you know, similar power, similar performance. Nobody can beat our customer service. Like nobody can beat the mechanism that Senior, Cheryl, Junior, Nardi, and Tyler have just fucking perfected just the system the shipping the the getting back to people the the making sure the p's and q's the dotted i's cross t's it's unbelievable and when you watch it in person it's a well-oiled machine and it's impressive it's really it really is impressive now guys i've worked at many places big places small places union jobs non-union jobs shit job this place is legit they're they legit got their shit on the money uh, ba, 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 ba. Jeremiah came in the house. Very nice. Uh, you're going to go to the track tomorrow. Cool. If it doesn't rain tomorrow, Jeremiah, I might be there, but I might be watching because I didn't get the Fairmont's um, belt in time, but I might bring the GT500. So who the hell knows? I got the spark plugs ready, change the oil, and I'm ready to party. See if I can go with low eights in that hunk of shit. Uh, what up, perro? Uh, and, and you have a thumb. I don't know what he's talking about. I'm 40 years old. After high school, I never had to check my grammar until Alex's show because it becomes a whole bunch of fun when I read it back. Um, ouch, a little late, but dropping me gusta. We'll listen later. Thank you very much. And Coyote says, uh, hit the like button. Thank you guys. I got 174 likes that works. So someone said weird question, probably a dumb one, but I can send in a data log just to make sure everything's top shape. Car feels a little rich, still runs amazing. Don't want to waste your time though. Okay. So that's another thing we get all the time. It feels rich. Well, what does a car feeling rich feel like? Like what does a rich feeling car feel like like a lot of people blame the throttle about le- throttle body latency or a bad o2 it's choking out alex it's choking out well fuel injected cars don't choke out when sensors go bad they start to act up it's not like one day you're driving down the street and everything is hunky dory and perfect and then it just acts up for no fucking reason if it acts up it's a sensor you got water in the filter Something must have happened to cause a change in the vehicle's driving habits. So, but yeah, but as always, send in a data log. Um, I'm doing an old change to the S550 Mobile One, only one I could find available. Eliza's, that or Motorcraft. The Motorcraft fully synthetic S550 is what I use on all the vehicles. Um, Justin White for LSAs. He knows his shit. I know, I know Justin White. I actually recommended Justin White to Rami. Rami Zidon of Two Auto Solution asked me one day, Alex, I want to start fucking with ZR1s. CTSVs, Chevy shit. Who do I go to? And I said, there's only one remote tuner that I know of that gets back to people, and it's Justin White. And he goes, okay. So, hey, Justin, the reason, and I, and you could ask Rami, the reason you do work for Rami, because of me. And that's the first time I've ever said, because of me, you got business. I'm not saying you owe me. I'm just saying the name I dropped was yours to Rami. So do him right. If you need something, do him right, brother. I mean, don't, don't fuck him over. Now, I'm not saying you're going to fuck him over, but I'm saying do the dude right. The guy is super legit. Favorite color on S550? Honestly, it's become ruby red and race red. I didn't think I was a red guy. Deep Impact Blue is great, honestly, but uh, I love the ruby red and the uh, race red on S550s. It just pops just right, in my opinion. I want to buy coolant. Dow Chemical having a shortage right now. Stop. Stop. Yeah. It gets a little nibbly, so you got to cut the shit. Hey. So, um, b- 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 Castro Edge 550, Rick Crawford Racing. I don't know what we're talking about. Create a whole tuner can start with a stock file or blank setup or standalone and take your modified to completion. Incorrect. That's a calibrator. Um, Alex, what kind of sealant would you use on a MAF sensor and a manifold swap? Swap an F 150. Oh my God. What the fuck are you saying? Alex, what kind of sealant do you, would you use AMAF sensor or a manifold swap swamping F-150 LS manifold for a Mustang? Guys, 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 one more time. Alex, what kind of sealant do you, would you use on AMAF sensor or a manifold swap swamping F-150 LS manifold for a Mustang manifold? I don't even know what the fuck he's talking about. 
My short-term fuel trink bank to bank is like one to two percent. Okay, so he's good. <laughs> um, I feel it's rich. I feel it's shifting too soon. I feel it's slower. Too subjective, data-driven decision making for the win. Exactly. The Crimson Royal they did for 18 was mint. I know they're different. Di oh, here we go. Turbo Diesel Dan. I know they're different. T E H E R different. Did you dig the five liter in your Genesis? I just put a deposit down on a five liter powered Infinity FX 50 390 for my all wheel drive mini. Yes, man van. <laughs> yeah, I did like the Genesis. I, I like the power delivery. I like the smoothness of it. What I didn't like was the transmission. Super fucking lazy. Um, I had a stroke reading that. I had a stroke reading that. I had to read it three times to even like get through it. It was unreal. Homeboy needs to go back to school. Swamping. That's how my he what are you swamping? I'm swamping an LS manifold for an AT manifold. I'm like, what? My brain hurts. That was the comment of the week a month ago. The question was asked several live streams ago with the exact same typos. Oh, gotcha. So they just did a copy paste. Um, <laughs> read it with the Arab accent <laughs> only when like the name is Oner or, or something like that. Uh, <laughs> it feels rich because the exhaust looks like it's rolling coal. Um, well, okay. And that's another thing, right? Let's, let's really, let's really have some critical thinking happening. Critical thinking. The O2 sensors read burned oxygen burned so if it's unburned <laughs> what will it read it smells rich but it's showing lean on the log oh so rich unburned gas smelling through the exhaust is actually showing lean on the wideband think about it 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 measures, come on, buddy. It measures burned gases, not unburned. It don't measure liquid. <laughs> Alex just went through a similar situation. I put a new cold air filter on my VMP Gen 3R and the car started running rich. Put the old filter back on and it's fine. I assume the new filter was too small. No, the filter does not matter. The filter does not matter. This is what tends to happen, right? Do yourself a favor. If you have an open cold, if you have an open air element filter, open air element, Open the hood and start the car. Open the hood and start the car. Chuka chuka boom. Now, shut the hood and start the car. Chuka chuka boom. Chilling. Turbulent air is the biggest culprit for startup issues. The mass airflow sensor is constantly sampling the smoothness of the air. So if you have a higher flowing filter that allows more air to pass through the map in a turbulent fashion, a la the PMAS race filter, the car is going to surge. It's not going to have a smooth airflow going through the map. It's going to be turbulent. It's going to cause mini tornadoes inside the motherfucker. And the thing is just going to run like shit until you rev the engine and drawing in the air into the motor straightens out the airflow then all of a sudden the car is smooth again it drives fine it drives fine but it idles like shit because now you have less air being drawn through the filter and it causes turbulence and the mass airflow sensor is very sensitive and it causes issues what diff do you recommend for a base whipple 19 mt82 373 or fucking four tens a whipple 19 mt82 373s or 410s, brother. Appreciate the feedback as uh, feels rich. I noticed it's been sounding like a popcorn tune on D-Cell. So, bad luck. You probably have a bad O2 or a lazy O2, meaning the O2 is on its way out. So, if I were you, I would take a look at uh, the data log, send it in. We'll take a look at it. We need data, though. It's running rich because he got the YOLO meth-injected hot air intake. Need OPS and NA to rev higher. Got it. Uh, came in to smash the like button, Miguel, and I'll watch later. I appreciate you doing that very much. Oil from the filter on the math, that also can do it. A lot of people have like a k and filter that you oil, and they just fucking slather it on. And they don't realize that when they put it back on the car, that oil is going to get sucked into the mass airflow sensor. So a dirty mass airflow sensor is not a good thing. It has to be super clean. The airflow is great. Why do you think Vortec cars... Run so well. Vortec and Paxton cars run really well. The 
essentially the mass airflow sensor is in the middle of all of that piping after the intercooler in the middle of all of that piping. So there is no turbulence. The inlet is the, uh, the, 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 the impeller compresses it through the centrifugal goes down into the intercooler air to air. Then it comes out and then boom hits the hits the mass airflow sensor. So when you see a Vortec car start here, a Vortec car start here, Pro Charger car start, Paxson, it's like chugga chugga, run, chilling. Idle's good, idle quality's good, everything's good because the mass airflow sensor is like in the middle of all of that shit. It's not at the end, either close to the charging system or the, it's not close to the throttle body because you never want a mass airflow sensor close to the throttle body due to turbulence. Or too close to the end of the filter. That's why when Ford, when you look at where Ford puts their mass airflow sensors, it's in a strategic spot for the smoothest airflow possible. And they use a box that has indirect air come funneling in through the grill. And it has like a chambered system that like kind of moves around, but it is never directly ram aired in. It usually drives like shit when it's ram aired in. Um, Alex, those tornado intake tube inserts are worth it. I heard they give you a 10 horsepower gain. Uh, nice name, bro. Um, basically priming Alex, any aftermarket AM gauges in the car worth having? No, because your N gauge SCT or RTD can read everything. The OBD2 port is spitting out except flex tuning, because I think that's a strategy issue or something. How HP tuners samples things, certain strategies. Hey, you're biting a little hard. I don't care that you nibble, but you're biting a little hard. You're biting a little hard. Um, I'm here to learn about porting fuel injectors. That's the other thing. Did you hear that? Yesterday, some guy said, hey, Alex, do you guys support modified stock fuel injectors to flow 1,000 cc? Did you, excuse me? You took a stock fuel injector, modified it. Now, I understand the theory behind it. When you guys take a look at an ID1000, an FIC1000H, a long body injector, right? Or even a short body injector, like an MU52 body, they're all made by Bosch. Like they're all made by Bosch, right? There's all there's you don't see DECA, you don't see other, you know, people make it's usually Bosch. So when you look at the injector, you're like, well, wait a minute, what makes it a thousand cc versus fifty two versus it's the tip? Hey yo, it's the tip. So how do people flow match injectors? Well, they have some expensive machines, they stick a batch of injectors in, a huge batch of injectors. If you if they make the tip proprietary tip or whatever, they make them all flow a certain way. Okay, these are all flow matched, meaning this whole batch is within a certain percentage of each other. Then they send them off, right? Now, if you were to get an, a flow match set here and then a completely different set and you start mix mat, mix matching injectors from, they might flow differently. They might flow differently. So a lot of people want to modify a stock injector to flow 1000 cc. How would you do that? What kind of equipment do you have to make sure that every single injector is flowing the same? Have you guys seen injector cleaning videos where there's like a test tube and every single time they've pulsed the injectors, one fills up way faster than the other? So imagine what a tuner has to do in order to dial in injectors that are all flowing different shit, right? One injector is flowing a certain amount more than the other on different banks. I can't see that in a data log. In a data log, I can't see pulse width. In a data, well, maybe you can on certain certain applications, but generally, all we go is by air fuel on banks. So bank one, which is passenger side, let's say it's fueling within 2%. Then bank two is fueling 10%. I'm going to go, okay. Now, do we have an exhaust leak? Uh, I don't think so. No, no, no. You can't think. You have to know. No. Verified. Are both O2 sensors fairly new? Yes. So your injectors might need to get cleaned up because something's going on bank to bank. Is your combustion good? Are your plugs new? Are your coils? Do you have any codes? Because I can't go in there and individually raise cylinders if I don't know what all of them are using. That's why we say we want ID1000s, FIC1000s, 1440 uh, s I recommend the 1000s and the 1440s. To me, the 1650s are for racing only because you're not going to use them on pump gas generally. And I have 1650s in the Fairmont, and that sucker lives on the 85. Sorry to talk so much, but I, I'm on a data-driven kick today. Um, some chick named him after YOLO. Wow, what's going on? Sometime when searching your name, some kid comes up. Got it. 
Um, I was talking about cars in another Mustang Coyote car, and I have a Mustang, but I still enjoy your general questions. Got it. Alex, what's the maximum horsepower I can push using the fuel pump and injectors that come with the Whipple Stage 2 kit? You mean the stock fuel pump? And now, I don't know what Whipple uses. They use 38s, 52s, and 72s. I have no idea what the deal is. Let me get to the paid questions. I'm missing them. I'm sorry. Um, when are you going to tune the, any my Model Y? Never. Peyton Pruitt. Uh, when SVT says, you guys over in London. Awesome. Dakota got me all set up on 85. Took no time at all. We're going to pull it down once I get my N-Gage back. Uh, awesome. Coca-Cola says, I'm just here so I won't get fined. I swallow cum says, hey, Alex, went from a 305 45 ET Street R to a 315.50. Do you like to keep them around the same pressure? I had a 305 45s at 15 PSI cold. Thanks. Yeah, 15 to 17, in my opinion. At the track, on the street, in the, well into the 20s, maybe even 30. I have my R88s at 30, and it drives great. It doesn't grip grip, but it's pretty damn good. What do you feel is normal short trim imbalance between bank one and bank two? Bank one tends to run 10 to 15% leaner at low RPM. Wondering if I have a leak. You have a leak or a lazy O2 sensor, Matt 2011 GT. You either have an exhaust leak, and it's causing that sensor to pick up fresh, unburned gases, or you have an injector issue on that bank, Usually, it's an O2 sensor, in my opinion. That's the cheapest route. Este show está de madre, bicho, says clap my cheeks, Alex. <laughs> Tony está de madre. Bump some annual AA. I don't even know who the fuck that is. Alfredo Diaz became a seven-month member today. He says, hey, seven months. Marcus Halderson says, channel support, and thanks for all the info. Uh, hope I'll have a coyote one day. Just so rare and expensive in my country. Are you in Sweden? Looks like you're in Sweden. Car feels like it's running rich. So I changed four FICs for LU47s. That should balance them out. You'd be surprised how some people think exactly like that, sir. Alfredo Diaz says channel support. Just the guy 69 says had my 2020 in the shop for three months. Car has lazy throttle response and rough idle. I did a bolt check on the intake system and probably still persists. Only mod is E85. Could it be three month old E85? It doesn't help, but the best way to check it out is to data log it and see if the short trim fuel trims are on the rich side. Dude, what is your issue, dude? What is your issue, dude? I start to talk and he starts to like freak the fuck out. Attention. He just wants attention. He's like a chick. Um, someone said my tip flows a little weird in the morning. I should call her. Chupapi says, Alex, what's the better choice for potential growth? A Gen 1 S197 or a C7 Grand Sport? Thinking about moving over to the Corvette platform, though. Now, Chupapi, if money is no object, S197s are a fucking stout, stout, stout platform. To me, it's the Fox body of the future. Fox bodies, to me, are beginning to get to that price where you start looking at S197s, like V6 S197s, shit-ass S197s. Why? Coyote swap them, make them race cars. You know what I mean? That's what I'm looking at now. When I look at a V6 bitch-ass car, we already know it's optioned shitty, has no crazy options. It has smaller, does it have smaller brakes? I think some of them have smaller brakes. Shitty suspension. You're going to change all that shit out anyway. So I start looking at S197s, shit-ass ones, V6 ones, and I go... I could make that a nice little race car and I can get into it for like seven grand or six grand. And the body is mint and the chassis is a little better. Yes, it's heavier. But when you look at a Fox body, motherfuckers want 7,000 for a clapped out piece of shit. And you're like, are you fucking insane? So to me, the S197 is the Fox body of the future. Maybe in 10 years, you're going to start seeing a lot of Coyote. I'm sorry, a lot of S197 with LSs, Chevy motors, big blocks. You'll see it. The S197 will be the Fox body of the future. Um, I guess YouTube allows same screen names. I guess so. Um, hey, I have a 1050X in my car. And now I upgraded to a 1300 or FIC 1440. Either is going to be good. Afdad Ahmad. Either is going to be good. I prefer the FIC 1440 because it just gives you that little headroom. Finding a 1300 non-X and the price. Ship for the price. I'd get the FIC 1440 all day. Marcus Halderson says... I'm in Iceland. Can literally count the Coyote Mustangs with one hand. So, at least five. Um, <laughs> you sound ridiculous. <laughs> you sound ridiculous. Uh, free Tony. He's right here. He's right here. He's right here. He's right here, okay? He's free. He's fine. He's fine. There's no issue. Fuck you. Fuck, fuck you. Fuck you. Um... What did I miss? Nothing. Uh, but, but, but what about the diff on the axles and the V6s? Are they different? Look, I'm gonna. you're going to build the rear end, guys. Forget about keeping shit that's in a V6. 
to no look chassis you're looking at just the body because when you get a fox body do you leave the stock 88 alone fuck no take that bitch out put some 35s in it spool or a wave track you know uh, axle tubes the whole nine yards you know you're gonna do it up so if you're gonna do it up i'd rather start with an s197 right now be right back. Going to go by eight yards of gravel. Plumbing, a centrifugal for the rumored dual throttle body coyote. Sounds like a packaging nightmare. Not really. It's just the inlet tube. If it's going to be map based, you just put a Y at the end and fucking route it. And it's not, it's not going to be that big of a deal, dude. Not really. Get a factory five coyote. If the money is no object. Exactly. Uh, does he bow or does he woof? He woofs. He woofs. Love how he walks himself with the leash. Yeah, he's a, he's a good pup. Um, he kind of just does his own thing and sleeps most of the day now can't complain he's been a pretty damn good pup you guys remember when he was a little fucking little thing and i had him like here but now he's a, a little man what's up alex if i wanted to go with a safe nitrous kit what is that what's a what's a what's a dangerous nitrous kit like what oh no, you definitely don't want to go with a with you want to go with a dry kit <laughs> you you definitely don't want to go with nitrous express the motherfuckers rep Crazy gangs down in fucking Cali. You want to go with nit <laughs> nitrous outlet. Like, what's a dangerous versus safe nitrous kit? Uh, for my 18 GT, what would you recommend? I'm not a tuner. I want something to slap on and add 100 horsepower and go. John Mariotti, you're looking at nitrous completely wrong. Nitrous is the most end user heavy power adder. That means you, uh, you, uh, John absolutely has to know a lot about cars when it you can't just slap a nitrous kit on and just go nope you need to gap the plugs properly you need to run the nitrous room properly you need to make sure the bottle has proper pressure you need to make sure the nitrous line is purged properly you need to make sure you have the proper jetting in there nitrous is for people that really know a lot about cars nitrous is not for the beginner a lot of people look at the price and they go oh shit it's 2100 bucks better than an eight thousand dollar supercharger i'm gonna get that then you get these wires this window switch and you're like well, i'm just gonna put it on then your tuner goes okay bottle warmer bottle do you have a bottle warmer do you have a purge no man i just got wires and a fucking hose and a bottle i'm like yeah no no so nitrous is the most complicated power adder there is. The end user really has to know a lot about cars. You know who doesn't have to know a lot about cars? Blower guys. Blower guys just put the blower on, put a 10 PSI pulley, bye bye That's what you slap on and drive. A blower car. A nitrous car? Dude, absolutely end user heavy so you kind of have it backwards unfortunately aldo shift says currently got to build short block ready for 1100 horsepower currently have a triple pump fuel system to support but don't know how to buy 1300 don't know don't know to buy 1300s or 1700s get 1440s that's the nice in between guy 1440s will support 1100 horsepower no fucking problem what horsepower level should you suggest getting a drive shaft on an s550 it's not about horsepower level because a stock s550 with sticky rubber will break a drive shaft so it's about what you're doing with the car. Hey, uh, was the 50 in your Hyundai the same as Ford? Fuck no, not, a, not at all. Mr. King says, Alex, do you know if there's any difference between the Gen 3 F-150 and the Gen 3 Mustang in terms of power limit? No. Also, do you know anyone in Florida for an install? Yeah, but look, I've seen F-150 Gen 3s make 1,100. I've seen Gen 3 Mustang motors make 1,100. So I think in terms of power limit, the sky's the limit on both of them. They're similar. Um, but... Uh, installer in Florida. It's, I mean, I, I mean, there's only one person I trust in Florida, all of Florida. And that's Mike Chamberlain. He does my personal shit. Me. I'm talking about me. You can go to all the shops that rep their shit on Instagram and Facebook, but you're asking Alex Flores, who does he trust in Florida? It's one guy. It's Mike Chamberlain. I know you've answered this before, but what RPM on and off for nitrous? 3,800 to 6,500? No, Matt, 2,100 GT. You can have it set. So you're a manual. You, you shift at what, 7,500? Have it on till 7,300. And you have a wide open throttle switch, right? So when you let off the gas, the nitrous turns off. You get back on the gas, the nitrous turns on. Just get a Paxton. Yeah, the Paxton to me is the most uh, easy... Power adder, Paxton Vortec Pro Charger, the most easy power adder that you can slap on 
and just go. Nitrous, you cannot slap on and just go. It's end user heavy. Um, he says, thank you for setting me straight on the nitrous question. You got it, brother. I got you. I just watched a video of a Mustang guy explain his NA build cost Gen 1, 15000 to go 11.2 or 11200 I'm telling you, NA guys spend way more money than blower guys. Matt Goodall is a great example. Matthew Goodall, I think, was looking to go way in the tens, naturally aspirated. He went in 11.2 in his S550 or 11.4. 11.2 or 11.4 in his S550. And I said, wow, that's pretty awesome. What are your goals? And he said, well, I want to go all out, NA. And I'm like, bro, I, I love you. Why don't I just get a blower in that bitch and enjoy your full weight car anywhere you want to go? And he's like, uh, I mold it over. Then he did the, 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 the biggest sin on the planet. He did not get a, he got a blower, got a pro charger even. Something I don't recommend, but he got it. And I tuned it. No big deal. And he got himself a budget return style fuel system. And I go, dude, I love you. It's running out of fuel. Look right here. It's running out of fuel. He's like, ah, oh, I can't. No way. I go, yes way. It's running out of fuel on the 85, man. You, I told you. Gets a four innovations fuel system. Goes 9.0 at like 140. Pretty full weight. I'm like, how can you beat that? How? What's the fastest NA car S550 around? 9.1. Probably weighs 28 to 2,900 pounds, exotic fuel, just a whole bunch of shit. It's, it's ridiculous. A whole bunch of shit. And all of a sudden, a guy with a blower and full weight goes faster and spends probably half the money. It's, 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 it's a, a cost-benefit analysis you got to do. Um, Mr. Unknown says, Alex, I'm, uh, I'm going to install a Vortec V3 on my 10R80. On your 10R80? Wow. How are you going to install a blower on a 10R80? Trans. Should I swap out the spark plugs? Oh, come on, man. Of course. <laughs> of course you got to swap out the spark plugs, man. Brisk 14s, or in my opinion, NGK 6510s. Brisks are good, but you got to change them more often. NGK 6510s, to me, are that perfect all-around spark plug for a power adder that just suits the right needs and gap it at about 25,000. Do you guys support the FIC 1650? We do, but Mike Vasquez, um, it's E85 only, but don't expect it to drive great. You know what I mean? I got it on my Fairmont. It's fine. It's just it's just a big aggressive injector. It's no different than an ID seventeen hundred on a car that doesn't make a lot of power. An E eighty five. It's 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 gonna do okay. Um, in my opinion, a fourteen forty is better. J D Swag says, sent you a pic in the email post. If you're like, well, what are you talking about? Send me a pic in the email. What the fuck are you talking about, man? Come on, man. You're stopping my flow, bro. You're stopping my flow. And watch it be about candy. Love you. <laughs> watch it be about. Oh, I sent you a picture of candy. Yes, did you like? Did you get that? <laughs> I'm like, dude, it has to be like tits, ass, some cool. But no, I bet you it's candy. <laughs> Man, deep sing. Comment of the week. Oh, he's he's on it. He's doing the comment of the week, dude. You are hot. You're like exuding heat. Oh, look at that. You got the comment of the week. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I will post that. That's very good. Thank you very much. That's very nice of you to do. KC five twenty six used to do that. But what? now she's gone again. She she showed up. Now she's gone again. Maybe she got dicked down by the Mexican guy again. Who knows? Don't pee. Don't pee here, bro. Kill you if you pee. Budget return sucks. Budget return sucks every time. Uh, every time. What would cause air load to vary on a vehicle? Same boost setting. Controller shows same boost. But load can be different on different days. Well, it could be... Um, it could be conditions outside. So if you have a very, mm, it all depends on air density too. You know what I mean? If you, if you in the morning have a bunch of crisp, dense air, air load might be higher than a very muggy, 100 degree hot day. 90140 is dummy quick. It is dumb quick. And he had a Pro Charger P1, I think. E85, 20 degrees. Trans brake, 6R80. 9-0. 140, bro, bro, at like 3,800 pounds, Psh, stupid, Alex, quick question, I'm getting tuned by you, uh, 2,500, 5,000 slow rev since my car is auto, is it okay to put it in sport mode, yes, that's the way we do it, and in the instructions, it says to do it that way, you can do it in gear, so the slow revs are very difficult, so a lot of people do it in park or neutral, and they find it very hard to go 2,500, 3,500, 4,500, 5,000, I go, no problem, guys, put it in second, have a long road and just slowly bring it up. And it's super smooth. And on the graph and the data log, it looks phenomenal. That's the way we like it. 
What breed is Tony? He looks cute when he's curious. Uh, he is a Boston Terrier. Boston Terrier. Everyone thinks he's a Frenchie. I'm like, he's a Boston Terrier, goddammit. Uh, she got mad you found a lady. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that on the dating channel. It is an interesting story. But nothing crazy. Nothing specific. 99% of the time, budget, anything sucks at some level. Yeah, I mean, so, again, nitrous. Nitrous is budget-friendly, but it's end-user heavy. To me, budget, okay, okay. So, the Power by the Hour F-150 Turbo Kit. You're going to look at it and you're going to go, well, Alex, why should I get the Power by the Hour F-150 Turbo Kit over ON3 or anyone else? I'm going to say, how much is an ON3 kit? And you're probably going to say 6000 bucks, Fully loaded, everything. Well, let's say PBH's kit is 8000 bucks. Whoa, Alex, is $2,000 more. Labor. Labor. The PBH Turbo Kit is going to end up being a basically a cap back exhaust that you have to run an oil line, an oil pump to the to the turbo, just like any other turbo. Okay? So what you're saving is in install time. Budget fuel systems versus versus four innovations fuel systems. What you save in price, you pay for in labor for install because there's relays, there's shitty ass wires, the instructions fucking suck. So yeah, you saved four hundred dollars, but now you got to upgrade the pumps. You got to put booster pumps in it. You got to upgrade the wiring. You got to. It is. It's not working like you want. Whereas four innovations. Plug, play, plug, play, plug, play, run it, and you're done. Life's good. Dude, what is your issue, dude? He, and there's no way you got to poop. You already pooped, bro. Which would you pick, Turbo 400 Power Glide, for a big, single turbo setup? Okay, let's, how big? How big? Are we talking 1,500 horse? I think, I, I think both are fine. I personally would go with the 400. Personally would go with the 400 because I have experience with it. Um, Alex, who's your fastest drag customer? Me. No, no, uh, my, wait, the fastest car I've tuned is the GT 500. <laughs> it's an 8081 car. So yeah, me, I don't have anyone in the sevens. I think junior has all the guys in the sevens, the big boys, Tony support, which, which thumb do I press to keep the channel fully bolted on the trans blower lady T got it. And then Omar C has uh, became a Totin level member. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you doing that. Um, Yonsei 5 how the fuck do you do that? What is Yonsei saying? Alex, do you data log crankcase pressure for misfires or blow-by? Yonsei, where's the crankcase pressure sensor? Think about it. We can only data log what has sensors. So where's the crankcase pressure sensor? It's like when people say, Alex, I, I installed the cap back. I need a new tune. Really? What's where's the catback sensor? Oh, uh, doesn't it flow more air? Right, that's what the math sensor's for. Oh, uh, I installed long tube headers. What should I do? Nothing. But I'm adding more air. Okay, the math sensor's taking care of it. Oh, uh, they're confused. Um, but, 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 max possible wheel horsepower. Here we fucking go with these questions, X. This is why I'm thinking of making it members only chats. For MT82 Whipple 19 using MS109 38 inch, I'm done. I'm done. I don't even care. I don't care. I literally don't care. Hey, Alex, I got my tune from you a, a couple months ago. And for some reason, lately, listen to this, guys. Listen, listen, listen. Her beaver smells says, I got my tune from you a couple of months ago. And lately, I get a lot of popping deceleration. Sounds like a verbal tune now. Should I send you a data log? You have an issue with the car. Because if it's doing it lately, you either have an O2 sensor going out. Or an exhaust leak. Yes, send us a data log. Do you work on a Fairmont yesterday? I did work on the Fairmont yesterday. And basically, it was trying to determine the belt size for a 3.0 pulley. Come to find out, there are no belts around. All the belts are fucking backordered. So, Fairmont's not going to go to the track. Um, Sweet Stylist says, just bought a 17 manual a couple of weeks ago. No question, just support. Thank you for doing the shows. Thank you for the support. Appreciate you very much. What's your opinion on solid axle swap or S550? The race set the track with very crappy traction. The car has potential to make 1,200 horsepower. A 315 tire. What size tire do you have on it, Wilson's AK? I don't think a solid axle is the... I don't think a solid axle is the fix. I think a properly set up IRS is ju not just as good, but it's pretty damn good over a solid axle. Now... 
TRZ has a S550 solid axle swap, you're going to pay big fucking money. And guess what? The car is going to look fucking stupid. Love you guys who have solid axle S550s. They look fucking stupid. They look literally like a, like a renegade car. I'm like, okay, so it's not a street, it's not a street car anymore. It's a, it looks like a mini tub piece of shit now. I'm just like, congrats. No one cares anymore. And it, <laughs> why, why would you do that for a car that doesn't run deep fours in the eighth? Deep, like 430, 440. The Luns have gone for what, 70, 480 with IRS? And the uh, S197 has gone 470 with a UPR suspension even. This bobo shit. Um, bottle nozzles, lines, Warner pressure gauges, window switch, solenoids, budget friendly is just safe for a blower. Exactly. Max power is 1500. We'll try it. Okay. Plus crankcase. Oh, max power is 1500. We'll try it. I don't know what he's talking about. Plus crankcase is vented to trans exploded and broke the OSS. I don't know what he's saying. I got a burble tune when my trans exploded, broke the bro the OSS. Got it. Plus crankcase is vented to the intake. You won't build any pressure. Got it. Max power is whatever the rods will live through. Hey Alex, what size belt do you need? Um, I need a eight PK twenty one ninety. Copy. There you go. And, and guys, I need it by today, so it's over because the track's tomorrow. So it's not gonna happen. Eight rib. Go on Sentry. Should I forego the BS and install? ID 1050s for some overhead. Never going to go over 700 wheel. That's what they say. Uh, or is that overkill for the Gen 2 Coyote? No, nothing's overkill for the Gen 2 Coyote. You should get 1050s. Beefcake sells a complete kit, like a Paxton two, you know, kit, 1050Xs, da 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 it, it just works. Get it, get it, get it. You won't regret it. Do you know of Mo Mackey's JPC's Orange S 2015 car? Buddy just picked that car up a few weeks ago. I know of the car, yes. I don't know much about the car, but I know of the car. Alex, uh... Can I take off the intake on my Vortec for Mexico Racing Night? Yes, you can take the intake off because the mass airflow sensor is in the charge piping, nowhere near the compressor. Hey, Alex, what wheel horsepower in 85? Should I start worrying about my Siley twin pump return style fuel system? Dash six feet in return. Wow, why did you buy that? Poof. Talk about a budget kit that don't work with a damn. Love you. Um, I would, I would worry at about 13 or 14 PSI. I think 10, 11, 12 be okay. 13, 14, 15 PSI on a blower application, it'll stress it out more. On a turbo application, you can get away with a little more because the turbos aren't causing the engine to effectively lose more. You know, you know what I mean? So when you're turning a blower with a Coyote, the crank is pulling on the blower and that's causing about 80, 80 to 90 horsepower loss. With a turbo, it's free power. So you can get away with a little more on a turbo than with a blower on a shitty fuel system. Uh, eBay, 255 LPH pump, son, got five in stock tank. One big 104 millimeter turbo. Uh, okay, one, why? <laughs> why? S550 will only need solid axle if you plan on full tubs and steam rollers, exactly. I have a couple of projects coming up, and do you have an email you can post to ask a few questions? Fuck no. Yeah, support at lundracing.com. Support at lundracing.com. I cannot sit there and outline your whole build. I cannot sit there and chit chat about cars all fucking day. That's what I do for a job. Imagine you were a, you build decks for a living, right? And that's all you did eight hours a day. Then you go home and your buddies only, only hit you up about deck stuff. Could you imagine? Those aren't friends. Those are fucking freeloaders. So you want me to chit chat with you about your builds coming up because what you might help me, you might make, make me tune them. I, I don't get that money. Lund racing does. So if you want to ask about builds and chit chat, love you, love you, love you. You got to understand my personal time is worth money. If we're talking car shit and not a little money, a lot of money, because at the end of the day, after 12 hours of fucking with car shit, the last thing I want to do is answer emails about car shit. No, thank you. Especially for free, because y'all don't want to pay. I love y'all. Y'all like, Alex, I need some advice. Here's $2 on Facebook. I'm like, okay, I'll answer one question. Like, I, like people think that the information that I have access to is worth two bucks. So I'm like, okay, then I'm going to give you $2 worth of info. I love you guys. You got to understand, I am not in this for shits and giggles. I'm in this to make a lot of fucking money. I'm in the YouTube channel to make a lot of fucking money. 
I work for Lund Racing to make a lot of fucking money. If I do not make a lot of fucking money either, I stop doing that. That's just how it is, guys. I'm here for money. Um, I'll hit you up on TB. I'll hit you up. TBR for the injectors. Got it. Uh, what's up, Alex? Long time. Haven't been on the live, but here's a night after work. What's up, Izzy? Finally got switched to 85. Sorry for the stupid questions. Process had me stressed. You're good, brother. I just emailed you a long on Facebook. What's up? <laughs> That's how it is. Hey, Alex. Love your show. This is okay. This is how an email goes, guys. I got five minutes up. What's up, Alex? Love your show. Big fan since the old YOLO days. Hey, got a quick question. So, back in 1986, I had a Fox body thing at Trick Flow Twisted Wedge Heads, a B Cam, and an Edelbrock Performer RPM upper and lower. Awesome car, 410s T5 with a center force clutch. Great little car, ran 11.7 NA. Awesome little ride. Then got divorced. You know, I had a couple of kids, had to pay child support for about 10 years, but now I'm in the coyote game, and it seems, based on your Facebook post, that you're the coyote guy. So, I got off my ass and got a new job at the um, Shell uh, Refinery. I'm making good money. Got a bunch of great friends there. They're nice guys. Boy, we talk about you all the time. You're a good dude. I could swear the stuff you say is stuff I say all the time, except you're on the fucking YouTube thing. So anyway, my question is this. What do you think is better? C85, Ignite85, or Pumpy85? Now, my pump E85 only tests at 60%. So my E85 is 60%. So now I'm losing my fucking mind, right? I'm reading this. And I am losing my mind. And then I just ignore it. I go, delete? Get the fuck out of my life. He just told me his whole fucking life story. Shit that I don't care about. Now, if you were to say, Alex, love the show. What's, what's the difference between E85 and, and C85? I might go, hey, that's a quick one. Beep, boop, 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 and we're done. Nope. These motherfuckers give you a soliloquy, war and peace. They tell you everything. They tell you their shoe size, if they're circumcised or not. As if I get... Love you guys. Love the fans. Love the likes. Love you guys watching the channel. I don't give a fuck about your personal life. I don't give... <laughs> you think I want to know if you got the... I don't care what you used to have. Are you fucking insane? Y'all don't know how to act. Could you imagine me emailing somebody that and thinking that's proper? Oh, talk about the quickest way for me to not answer your question is to say a lot of shit. Love you guys. I can save you time with part selection. I can save you time and money on... On, on ET, uh, ET goals, power goals, best thing to do, wrong thing to do. I got a guy right now on Facebook. Love him too. Are you tuned by Lund Racing? No. I'm like, why in the fuck are you talking to me? Get the fuck out of here. And he's like, no, no, but I might get Lund tuned one day. Oh, oh, so this is a job interview? This is you interviewing me? And if I pass your fucking test, you're going to send Lund Racing an NA customer? And you're going to want Facebook access because that's how you met me? Bro, you got it fucked up. You got it way fucked up. Way fucked up. And then they say, ah, I want you to tune it. You want me to tune it? You want me to tune it after hitting me up on Facebook about it so that then at 5 p.m., when you're done working and I'm done working, you're going to go, hey, Alex, a couple questions about that car you tuned. You know, the one that I sent you money for. I can't just ignore you on Facebook then, so I'm going to ignore you on Facebook now. You understand what I'm saying? Love you guys. Uh, Got to get Tony some new balances. <laughs> I can see how the convo can get crazy in ticket systems. I was trying my best just to send what he asked for, Rich 5 Exactly. Shoe size and circumcised. I'm putting that on my dating profile, guy. <laughs> Have you... Have you mold on my arm and you think it's cancerous? Exactly. Hey, man, Alex. Sorry I couldn't get... This is another one, guys. I'm going to go a little over. <clears throat> hey, Alex. Sorry it's been a couple of months. Car flipped over. Was driving down the street. Hit a fucking... Uh, I, I, I hydroplaned. Flipped over. Broke my arm. Then I got COVID. By the way, here's a data log. <laughs> Alex, here's a data log. 
Sorry for the delay. I don't care why. I don't care. Um, <clears throat> but you're the biggest celebrity we know. But, but you don't know me. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, you don't know me. You know this guy. You know Alex, your representative. Like, I, I've heard, I've heard a, a girl tell me one time, you saw like a cocky fucking asshole on your videos. And I'm like, yeah, but then when you get to know me, you're like a nice guy. Quiet laid back in the cut, not talking all that shit. She goes, yeah. And I'm like, do you think Denzel Washington is the guy from Training Day? Do you think Denzel Washington is the drunk pilot? Do you think Denzel Washington is the blind guy with the Bible killing everybody town to town? Do you think Denzel Washington was a drug smuggler from bringing, uh, de <laughs> bringing heroin from Vietnam in, in caskets? No, he's probably a nice, quiet guy that likes to have his fucking coffee and read his newspaper. Newspaper. <laughs> Show people. Always telling too much personal info. Um, not going to lie. I would pay big money for an engage just a data log. Seems cake. Exactly. See attached data log. Thank you for your help. <laughs> exactly. A Lily 552261. What? Change your name. Can you run water meth with you? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> here um you worked at taco bell but alex were you the but alex were your biggest fans we have reached overtime alex i started dating now can i get a flex alex i started dating now can i get a flexion for my whipple gt and people are loving it and tony just left the whole situation i'm out of here guys been a little bit over one minute over cost me time and money no thank you omar garza has been a member for seven months thank you very much and I think we're all, all cut up with the paid questions. Thank you guys a lot. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a show tomorrow. I might go to the track just to support the friends if Jeremiah Kemp's going to go. Or if I get, you know, stick up my butt to bring the GT500 to the track, I'll do so because the trans leaks and the alternators seem to have been fixed. So might bring it out there and fuck around if I can't find a belt for the Fairmont. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. See you guys maybe tomorrow. So if I don't show up tomorrow, I'll try to ma uh, make an announcement on the community tab. And if I don't see you tomorrow, I'll see you guys Sunday on the Peasant Chat. Have a great rest of your night.